Hello and welcome to my new video. I had this incredible idea about the new project. It would save me roughly 10 to 385 minutes every single week. Let me explain it to you. For my YouTube workflow, I always use the same folder structure, which looks something like this. So I wanted to write some code that would automatically generate all the folders. After telling my wife about this groundbreaking idea, she showed me this. So I had to come up with another idea. After crying for 7 to 8 minutes, I started searching the internet about cool ideas for new videos. But I didn't have much success with it. While being super busy at work, it finally struck me. When I write tests, I always have to write mocks for my interfaces. And I always wanted to use the Golang templating engine. So my brain did what it does best and gave me this brilliant idea. Generate mocks using Golang's templating engine. This would give me the perfect opportunity to learn something new while writing something useful. Let me show you real quick what this would look like. On the left side of the screen you can see a simple interface containing three functions. On the right you can see the corresponding mock. For my mocks I usually use the testify mock package. All three methods are implemented, so this struct implements my service interface. Using the Golang templating engine, I will read in this and generate this. The project will be split into three parts. In the first part, I'm going to read in the original file and pass through it. In the second part, I'm going to use Golang's templating engine to write out the mock file. In the third part, I'm going to bring the two parts together and have some fun. <laughs> so now that we know what to do, let's get coding. The first part is done and I'm now able to read in the Go file. On the left side of the screen, you can see the code that reads in the file and processes it. Let me quickly explain to you what happens. In simple terms, I read in the file line by line, then check for all the relevant lines and if there are any, store them in this slice right here. Now let's go over it in more detail. I use a scanner to read the file line by line. Every scanner.txt call gives me exactly one line I can work with. While iterating over all lines, I first check if an interface definition is starting using this function down here. I simply check if the line contains the word type, the word interface and an opening curly bracket. You can see right here that this is the case if you define an interface. If this is true, I set the isInterface definition variable to true. This marks all the following lines as relevant, so I append them to the interface lines slice. This happens as long as the isInterface definition variable stays true. It is set to false as soon as these two conditions are met. First, the variable has to be true in the first place, and second, the line must be a closing bracket. In the end, I return the interface lines. In the main file, you can see that I use the path to the line on the right as the input for the read function. I then iterate over all returned lines and simply print them to the console. Running the code will print the exact same five lines that define the interface on the right. Perfect! The first part is done, so two to go. Now it's time to write the mock file using Golang's templating engine. I will not be explaining the templating engine itself, so if you are interested in learning more about that, leave a comment down below. Then I will make a tutorial video about it, but for now I will only show what I use in my code. Let me first explain my train of thought so you can understand what I did more easily. On the left you can see how the end result should look like. Let us first focus on the login function. It consists of a name, parameters, return values, a called line, and a return line. And for some magical reason, these are exactly the fields in the function definition struct right here. As you might have guessed by now, this is no simple coincidence, but rather highly calculated. During the parsing process, I will take all lines I read in and fill the struct with the relevant information. The mock definition struct defines the whole interface that should be mocked. It has the package and the name field, as well as a slice of function definitions for all the functions that are defined in the interface. 
Now let's finally have a look at the template file I will be using to generate the code. If you have a look at the template on the right, again, it is no coincidence that the package, the name and the function definitions are all appearing on both sides of the screen. There must be some kind of conspiracy going on. Or maybe I will use the struct to fill the template with information. No one will ever find out. The cool thing about templating engines is that they usually provide some easy way to access variables and range over arrays. This way, I'm able to define this template once and the engine will use it as many times as there are elements in my slice. How cool is that? If you have a look at the main file, you can see that I use the write function of the writer package and pass in the destination of the generated mock file as the first parameter. The second parameter is the template file of the mock I just showed you. And the last parameter is an instance of a mock definition. Down here you can see how a filled mock definition would look like. I filled it with the information of the login function, so it should generate the same login function as in the original mock file. Running the code... Wait a minute, I think I forgot something. This is the right function I have definitely not forgotten to record in the last recording session. Here is where the actual magic happens. First, it parses the template file and generates a template instance t. Afterwards, I generate the output file in which the generated code will be written to. Right here, the execute function applies the parse template from the mock file and uses the data from the definition to create the actual output file. Now back to the present. Running the code generates the service from template underscore mock file right here. As you can see, in both cases the login function looks the same. So for an easy function, the templating seems to work. But what if the return parameter is no primitive type like the slice of users right here? In this case, I need to take whatever the .get call returns and cast it to the correct type before returning it. So there is more coding needed. Off to the keyboard I go. On the right, you can see that I added the type casting line slice to store all the lines that are relevant if the return value needs to be casted. In the mock file, I iterate over these right here and simply use it as is. This only needs to be executed though if the type casting line slice is not empty. Here in the main file, you can see that I added a second example for the list users function. Up here in the login function, you can see that the type casting line slice is empty, whereas down here, it is filled with some juicy lines of code. Running the main function and comparing the original file on the left to the generated file on the right, you can see that both functions look identical. Pooh, thanks for bearing with me. I know that this was a lot to process, so let's all take a quick nap, shall we? The second part is done, one to go. The parser code is a bit long, so I will not go through it all. But I will explain what happens in the parse function so you can understand what happens. First, I create a new instance of the mock definition as well as a function slice. This way, I can immediately fill values while iterating over the interfaces lines. The first thing that needs to be parsed is the package line. The isPackage function checks whether or not the parsed line is the one containing the package information. I use simple string checking for that. The parsePackage function takes the line and extracts the relevant information, hence the package name. Again, I also use simple string processing for that too. As you might have guessed, every single is x, y and z function works the same way. It simply checks if the parsed line is a line that contains information. If yes, the line, or the consecutive lines in case of the functions, will be processed using the parse x, y and z functions. This is why I do not want to go over all the code. Most of the functions basically work the same way. Here you can see that if the line is an interface definition, I extract the name of the interface and store it in the name field of mock definition. Down here I process every single function line if is definition function returns true. I extract all relevant information from the line and create a function definition instance while immediately appending it to the func slice. So for instance, I would take the list users line right here, extract all relevant information, 
and fill it into the function definition. So it looks like this. This directly corresponds to the lines in the mock file right here. When I run the code, you can see, well, nothing, because I first need to close all this stuff here. Now, comparing the original file on the left to the generated file on the right, you can see that it almost looks identical. But wait, that's child's play. Let's give it a real interface to play with. So I added another function. The code is working fine now, but I would like to add. <coughs> sorry, that's gross. Sorry. The code is working fine now, but I would like to add some final touches. For instance, I would like to have the input parameter and the output parameter as program arguments. Oh yeah, and of course I would like to have an executable so I can run it from everywhere. So some more code here and there, and then I have a perfect little helper that everybody's going to love. Now that I'm done with my awesome project, I showed it to one of my colleagues. And he replied with Even though I did not write something new or revolutionary this time, it still was super fun. I got to learn something completely new and wrote something I will use at work. So all in all, a great success. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and until next time, keep on coding.